Hello there, my name is Bruce Rain from Brain Geeks Creations. Thank you very much for joining me today on what is a fairly wintry day here in, uh, in Sydney. Uh, I um, just obviously a quick check to make sure that the audio is okay. I'm using a different microphone today. I want to make sure that I'm loud and clear without it going too loud and clipping and being awful. I also want to apologize to everyone for that stupid little love heart that appears in the chat now. It's not my fault. It's not my fault. That's uh, a YouTube thing. Uh, click the hell out of it and see what happens. It's like, you know, just bing, 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 bing. And yeah, the things just come boing, 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 boing. Have fun, you know. I don't know what it does, but apart, other than obscuring the chat, but there it is. Ah, okay, I'm going to say hello to MacMan142. Yes, we are going to be recapping all the things. Uh, Thomas is here, Garth Beagle is here, um, Brandon Bolzer is here, hello, Jack68K, Frank S, John, Jared Burma, Enzo Fitzhume, hello, hello. Um, it's, um, it's recapping time, yes. So I'm working on a video at the moment of the restoration of a Quadra 840AV. Big thank you to Jeff for donating that one to the channel. Uh, it's probably, I have had some wonderful donations to the channel and I always appreciate them, it's, it's fantastic. It, it sometimes puts me in a slightly difficult position because I'm sort of like, um, you know, uh, do you want me to promote something of yours? You know, if you're giving me a gift, I'm happy to return, you know, and uh, and this guy, he was sort of like, no, you know, just, yeah, just mention me. No, yeah, great, no worries. Um, Apple's Anonymous, hello there. Um, and uh, so did I say hello to Frank S if I didn't? Hello. Um, so, uh, so anyhow, the, um, this Quadra 840AV, I'm working on a video, and it's from basically from start to finish of me restoring the whole project, um, watching me get very frustrated with the um, power supply and then decide not to restore it and just use one of my spares. Um, and then DJ Craze, hello there. Um, and of course the Quadra 840AV is a really interesting one in that you've everything on, everything needs to be sort of fixed and recapped and repaired and stuff like that. Uh, apart from it obviously having terribly brittle plastics and the plastics just crumble and collapse. Um, we also have, um, uh, certainly on the one that I have, it is a caddy loaded CD-ROM drive, which means that needs recapping. Uh, it is a manual inject floppy drive. Now, not all of the manual inject floppy drives need recapping, but it's pretty easy to tell which ones do because of these little guys here. Boom. Uh, and so for those ones, they need recapping as well. Then of course the power supply on those things, they're a little bit dodgy, so you've got a recapping for the power supply. And of course the logic board, they need recapping. And there's 15 capacitors on the uh, Quadra 840AV, all of them needing uh, replacement. And um, hello, Paul Byerly. I'm not sure if I said that name correctly, my apologies, um, if I haven't. Uh, Jeremy's Vintage Hillbilly Shack, hello there. Jeremy VHS. Um, and so, yeah, the Quadra 840AV, um, you know, it's a fun old computer, but uh, I guess the disappointing thing about a Quadra 840AV is just how brittle they become. Um, you know, they're just so, you know, sort of so crumbly. Um, you know, I'm ha I've been having to open it and close it and open it and close it the whole stack of times, and every time I do that, another little piece of plastic comes off. Um, you know, I mean, I... It is my intention to kind of get it all sorted, get it all together, and then potentially never pull it apart again. <laughs> or maybe just to change the battery at some stage in the future. Uh, it's got a fresh battery in it now. Um, they have... Um, this particular Quadra 840AV came with a Radius Video Vision card, which allowed you to um, capture um, high resolution. Uh, not today's high resolution, but it allows you to capture in full uh, PAL, um, which is, uh, what is it, 5768 or something like that? 576 by 768? I can't remember exactly. Um, and so, yeah, it's, um, and it also came with a SCSI jackhammer, which is, uh, is, is you know, it allow, allowed you to actually connect uh, wide SCSI devices to it. Now, I won't, I won't be doing that because I'm going to be using um, a, um, a Zulu SCSI inside it, but the, um, the Zulu SCSI, um, it, it's only just a narrow connector on it, so I can't connect that to the wide port. So, you know, um, too bad there are so few Quadra A40 AVs in the world would love to see a, re a replacement MacFX case. Yeah, I mean, 
I mean, everything though, everything. I and mean, when you think about all the parts, if you've got a Quadra 840AV, you've got the front, you've got all the, the main front piece and you've got the, the bezels. And of course the bezels vary based on what you have inside. You've got the flop, you've got a blank bezel, floppy bezel, you've got a CD-ROM uh, caddy load bezel, you've got a, um, uh, the tray load bezel so for the CD. I think there's a zip drive bezel. Um, now obviously you can 3D print replacements for those quite well. Um, uh, new A40AV. <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, yeah. So, and, and then of course you've got uh, you've got the plas the plastic inside holding the whole thing together, and then you've got the plastic in the base. You've got plastic in the back, um, and uh, and then yeah, and then you've got the plastic holding the um, the new bus cards in. Uh, it's crazy, but anyhow. Look out for that video. I'm hoping I may even get it finished this weekend. We'll see. Um, I, uh, I will, and I've got another video, a review video coming out for a thermal camera, which I have to say I am loving. I, this is going to be a very glowing review because this thermal camera is just fantastic. I have had a, th a thermal camera for quite some time now, and it's one of the FLIR ones that attaches to the bottom of the phone. And I have had, I, I it's a thermal camera, okay? Uh, it, it, that, that FLIR one is a thermal camera, it, and I didn't have a thermal camera, and having a thermal camera is better than not having a thermal camera. But now having this other one, I can't see myself ever firing that FLIR one up again. Um, really can't. Cut bomb, hello there. Um, so anyhow, um, I, it is my intention to get these things recapped and ready to go. Um, and if we've got any time left, I might do a little bit of work on this. This is an LC630 power supply, which I thought I had already recapped and then I found out the other day that I had not. And not only that, I have to order some new caps for it as well. So I'll be doing that this afternoon. That's a little bit frustrating when I went to go do it and went, ah, I opened up my container to grab my 3300 microfarad 16 volt capacitors out. And it's like, it's an empty spot in the container. And I, ah. And that's very frustrating. That's the most frustrating thing when you go to do a job and you don't have the bits to finish it. And so you end up with something that's all pulled apart and in pieces on your desk and you can't continue with it. That is just the most annoying thing in the world. Well, I don't know. There are other things that are probably a bit more annoying, but. <coughs> so I think we'll probably start with the floppy drive. Uh, main reason being that it is probably the quick, <coughs> excuse me, quickest for us to do. <coughs> oh, pardon my coughing. Sorry about that, folks. Um, um, RF shields, hate them, hate them, hate them. Uh, I need a screwdriver. Here's one. It's a good job I never clean up my desk so then the screwdrivers are always there to be found. So we've got our little plastic um, caddy thing here on the bottom of the floppy drive. Uh, all things DG, hello there. Um, <laughs> Did I say coffee? I don't know. Did I say coffee? <clears throat> I love coffee, but I can't have caffeine. Well, I, that's not true. I can't have caffeine, but I, I just uh, can't have too much caffeine. It, uh, it messes with me. Right, so here's our two little caps here. We're going to just have a quick look and make sure that there aren't more caps. All the caps um, that I might have missed. I think there are only these two here, but I do want to be sure. Uh, where are we? Camera effects. There we are. There we go. I just got to make sure that we're, I just feel like my camera is a little bit, I don't know, it just sort of seems a little bit, uh, I'll try that. There we go. That'll do. That'll do for now. <laughs> um, uh, did uh, anyone here have a chance to see the Macyak show yesterday? Um, it was a lot of fun. We had a real kind of devil may care attitude about the show and it was a lot of fun. Did enjoy it. Carthor, hello there. What's Carthor from? I know the name, it's like a movie reference or something, isn't it? I think Carthor. Rings a bell from somewhere. <laughs> is it cold season in your neck of the woods? Yes, it is. We are right in the middle of winter. 
Now, it's been an unseasonably warm winter, but still has the cold days, as you would expect. Um, in terms of, I mean, look, I shouldn't say that. It started off really bloody cold, really cold, like way colder than normal. And then uh, it got, um, and then it sort of kind of mellowed out a little bit. This is going to suck. These are friggin' through hole. Son of a gun. I don't like it. That was my stomach. Okay, so what have we got? 4716. 4716. Balls. Okay, let's see what we let's let's figure something out here. 4716. Let's go and find our 16s for starters. Um, because I've got a mess here. Ah, I got the tents out. Got the tents. Okay, what's that? That looks like tens. These are all big ones. That's my big 16s. Uh, uh, that's a fan from a Quadrate 40 AV power supply. Uh, 250 volt? What have we got here? 50 volt? No. 25 volt? No. I feel like we're getting closer. 35 volt? No, we're not getting any closer. This is a lot. This has got to be 16s. Yeah. All right. Okay. <sighs> I was young, but someone made a game with a character called Carthor, called named Lord Carthor. Okay, there you go. <clears throat> now we know. Okay, 4716. Thankfully, I have a stack of these little teeny weeny, weeny weeny little 4716s. They're very good quality ones. These are, I believe, Panasonic's or something. I can't read that because my eyes are old. But these are good ones. You can always tell they're good when they're shiny, silvery bits here rather than just white. <clears throat> I like it. 4716. So, I am actually going to replace electrolytics with electrolytics. Um, but, uh, which of course, people might be like, oh, you can't do that. Oh, crap. Don't fall down. Uh, I'm just going to quickly look at the uh, thing here. Hmm. So these are rated to 105 degrees. That's good. I can't see a brand name on them at all. So they're probably Panasonic's. Panasonic don't put their brand name on their caps. <clears throat> they're too special. So we'll just, I'm basically just going to remove these ones here and replace them with these ones here. They'll all fit and everything like that. And they're nice and new, so it'd be good. I was watching a computer demo from 1968 that showed a mouse cursor, video conferencing, hyperlinks, and primitive form of the internet. So many technologies are far older than you would think. Yes, it was probably, what was that guy's name? Someone else will probably remember, um, who kind of invented the mouse. I can't remember his name, but... Um, that dude... And of course, there was amazing stuff going on at the Xerox Palo Alto Research Center. If anyone, there's a book called Dealers of Lightning, uh, which I can highly recommend, which is really interesting talking about. It's essentially, what happened was Fuji Xerox, sorry, not, they're not they were Xerox at the time, they're Fuji Xerox now. Uh, actually, they've, I think they've changed again, but let's not worry about that. Um, so Xerox were making photocopiers. And they were basically wanting to make sure that if we ended up in a paperless office, of course, they made all their money from paper. If we ended up in a paperless office, they wanted to be at the forefront. So they set up a research center and they basically just got a whole bunch of incredibly smart people together to come up with the future. How cool is that? to kind of figure out what the future was going to look like. And some of the most incredible technologies were invented there. But, of course, one of the big problems was that uh, Xerox, these were, these were essentially laser, or sorry, uh, photocopy salespeople. They really didn't know what to do with the technology. So most of those technologies that were made there actually ended up going elsewhere. Um, Doug Engelbert, that's the one, Engelbart, that's the one. He's one of those people that a lot of people don't know his name, but they really should. Uh, these, this cap, these caps aren't coming out after uh, 
me uh, um, removing as much solder as I can. So I'm now just going to hit him with some hot air. Try and, and if that doesn't work, they're probably stuck on with some. Uh, there we go. That worked. Probably stuck on with some. Okay, you. Hello, Mr. Sean. Welcome to the live stream today. You haven't missed much. You'll be pleased to know. Uh, we were we were really just killing time until you got here because we knew you were coming. Um, and uh, this is uh, a floppy drive out of a Quadra 840 AV, and we were just having a bit of a discussion about the Quadra 840 AV and sort of what an interesting computer it is and all that stuff. Uh, and that was pretty much most of it. Uh, now, uh, so these are replacement caps I'm putting on here. Um, I thought they were surface mount, but they're not, they're through holes. So I'm replacing th uh, through hole electrolytics with other through hole electrolytics. Um, as long as they're new caps, that's all we really care about. And these are good quality ones too, because I only buy quality, except at the times when I buy shit. <coughs> okay. Back to the scope view. It'd be good if I could just control this with my feet. You know, like a little foot pedal that changes cameras. But I don't have that. That's way too fancy for me. That's the sort of thing that a action retro channel budget could probably afford. Having said that, today is the day I get my Google money. I get Google money. I like it when I get my Google money. Shall we say hello to the chickens? They're making a little bit of noise at the moment. Uh, hello chickens. Oh, and pigeons. Piss off pigeons. I think I need to clean that camera. Looks a little bit rough, doesn't it? <laughs> One of the um, interesting things that I, ha I have affiliate links in my um, description of basically stuff that I use. I don't I don't sort of just put stuff in there willy-nilly. It's either equipment that I, I have and use and like, or it is stuff that uh, might be, say, a, uh, a budget alternative, because I accept that not everyone wants to spend as much money on stuff as I do. And so I have this, um, I have this in the description, a whole series of links to the equipment I use or other things that I recommend. And that, uh, and they're affiliate links, which means that if you do buy something from those links, I get a little bit of stuff. Now, because I'm in Australia, um, Amazon don't actually do the payments um, directly into an Australian bank account or, or PayPal. So I get gift cards instead. So, um, and when I have those gift cards, I, um, I use them for stuff for the channel. Uh, it works out quite well. It's a way of kind of being forced into reinvesting into the channel because I can't pay my bills with gift cards. I just can't. I'm gonna just clean the heads of this while I've got it open. Um, so I'm just getting a little bit of isopropyl alcohol. I'm just gonna very gently lift this up because we don't wanna lose the springiness in it. So just gonna get in there. I might actually even use the scope for this. Eh. Isn't it? We've got scope. You say scope. Could be meaning any sort of scope. Could be oscilloscope. Could be telescope. Could be microscope. How many other scopes are there? Stethoscope? What else? Um, but this one, I just call scope. Because it's the only one here. I do use a stethoscope in repairs from time to time. Um, just uh, when I want to try and locate sounds that are coming from problematic computers, I can just move the stethoscope around uh, until I can kind of isolate where it's coming from. <laughs> this could do from a nice good old clean. It could, it could, it could. Oh, 
Hello to everyone who is watching this on the replay and not live. It's a big shout out to you. Always like to try and say hello to you guys as well. Thank you very much for uh, for watching. Um, if you love the Q8 Accordia 840AV, please leave a comment about it because I do. I used to work with one professionally. Um, <laughs> is that what they're called? I don't think they. I think they're called an endoscope <laughs> rather than a colonoscope. I'm pretty sure they're an endoscope. Okay. Indian scammers pay the bills with gift cards. No, that's right. Jeff, Bet he's yeah, he's just like no. It's funny. I mean, virtually every other. Affiliate thing I have, they just they will either pay me um, into my bank account or they'll pay me uh, into my PayPal account. It works fine. <clears throat> Arse scope. <laughs> um, oh, I, and of course, uh, just a reminder to please. Oh, hang on. Where is it? There it is. Smash that like button. Um, okay, so that one was a pretty easy recap. That's kind of two capacitors that I've just had to do there. Um, I, the original ones, I, I'm not even sure. I, where are they? Have I, have I lost them already? This happens. I can't have thrown them away. I'd just be curious to look at... Oh, God, something fell down. Um, I'd be curious to look at them. Um, but I've, I've lost them. Because I do that. That's what I do here. I, I lose things very, very, very quickly. Oh, no. No, no that's not there. Yep, they're gone. They're gone. <clears throat> All right, just going to give this a quick little clean. Uh, well, and just get some of the gunk off from. <coughs> Excuse me. Look at this. I, I get nagged constantly by Jay from the House of Moth to do a live stream. I finally do one. Doesn't even have the good decency to turn up. Who does he think he is? Okay, well, I think we're uh, good to go with that one. Now, um, while I accept that uh, in many ways these manual injects are probably better than the auto inject, um, I, I kind of do prefer the auto inject ones. I don't know, there's just sort of, uh, I, I like the way they're made. Um, but, you know, I think uh, we we'll just have to accept this progress. Okay, so let's put this guy back together, and then hopefully he'll be working. Boo -doo -boo. Get in there. Come on. The auto-inject ones make a more satisfying noise. Yes, I would agree, and particularly when you're putting the disc in, when you, and the, just that sound of it, it, it pulling the disc and then dropping it down. It's, it's a lovely sound. Um, there we go. Now, I did, yeah, here we go. I, I, was, I was efficient and I put these things away. Who made the drive? Sonny. Sonny. Company that now makes loads and loads of shit movies. Let's be honest. They really do. I can't remember which way around this went, but I think it's that way. It looks right. Yep. That looks right. Okay, let's put this back on, and then this will be ready to go back into the 840AV, and I will test it out. I'm, the 840AV is a bit big to go onto this desk, so this is something that I will have to test um, not on stream. But you will see it on the video that I'm releasing on the Quadra 840AV. Yes, sirree. 
There we go. Now, uh, the CD-ROM drive is an interesting one. So I've done many of these CD-ROM drives. I haven't done as many of these floppy drives because to be honest, a lot of the time they just work, you know. But um, the, uh, um, <coughs> the CD-ROM drives, these really, really need recapping in a big way. Um, RF shield. I hate these RF shields. I hate them. I mean, is it an RF shield or is it something else? I mean, I think it's an RF shield, but they just piss me off. I put my little container away a bit prematurely, I think. I saw The Flash the other day. Has anyone seen that movie yet? The Flash? Curious to know what others thought of it. Mm. Okay, where are we? Where's my screwdriver? There it is. I can remember when CDRs were 20 Australian dollars a disc. Yeah, it's um <clears throat> I, I do as well, um, like as in ones for writing over, are you talking about rewritable ones? Um, or not rewritable, for, you know, as in blank ones, blank ones for writing yourself. Yeah, I remember that as well. Um, and there was a very limited around, a range around. I know that the ones that we used to buy in the early days were Kodak brand. They were the ones that were available here to us anyway. And, um, and yeah, I mean, you really, you know, you, you really needed to be thoughtful about what you would put on those discs. It's what actually led me to make one of my stupidest technology predictions that I've ever made. And that was, my prediction was that CD, um, uh, CD-ROM technology wouldn't really take off. And, and the reason why I came up with that conclusion, albeit wrong conclusion, the reason why I came up with it at the time was that Blank CD media was quite expensive, and at the same time, they were producing rewritable media. So they were magneto optical drives. And the company that I worked for, we had them, and they were like, we had two different types. So one's about this size, I think they're about 200 megs, and then there were bigger ones that were 650 megs. Um, and you could reuse them over and over and over and over again. And they weren't particularly fast, but neither were CDs for that matter. Um, and uh, and so this is at this time that these CDs were very expensive. Um, these magneto opticals were uh, readily available, and I was just like, CD's just not going to take off because we've got this rewritable option now. Okay, if the rewritables weren't around, maybe. But what I had not thought of in my prediction was that the CD ROM media was going to get so cheap. And, and at the time when I was working for a, like a pre press bureau and people were sending us um, artwork on, on a disc, uh, is this mine? That's 32 megabytes. I want that. Um, <clears throat> the, um, at the time, um, um, you know, I, I was working in a bureau and people were sending us, sending us artwork on discs. If they send it to you on a zip disc or if they send it to you on a magneto optical or whatever they send it to you on, there always had to be a return delivery. You had to send it back to them because the media was expensive. Then when CD-ROM started getting obscenely cheap, people would just send us artwork on the disc, on the CD-ROM, and then they're just like, once it's printed, just throw it away. Because who cares? It was so cheap and disposable. Uh, oops, I just dropped a screwdriver. <sighs> Poor old zip drives didn't last. They had a big enough impression. They were around for a while and wow, they were, um, they were the thing. I mean, in my, in my area of work, my area of work at that time, zip drives were the thing. Um, you know, they were just like everyone had them. And I mean, every single, um, uh, what would you call it? Um, uh, device that I had, every computer I had, had a zip drive in it. You know, I mean, we were, we had power computing computers and we had Apple ones and they all had zip drives in them. Uh, and if you like, for instance, I've got a G3, G3, I think, G3 blue and white. Then I've got G4 towers. All of them have got zip drives in them. They were just huge. 
Um, now, what I would recommend everyone do when they have a chance is go on to, um, this does not compute, Colin's channel. He did a video on the SciQuest drive and he includes information about the zip in that. And that is a fascinating story. It really is. I mean, the research that he put into that and the way he told that story was just absolutely top notch. It's the reason why he has squazillions more subscribers than I do. Um, but uh, it was, yeah, really fascinating stuff. So, because uh, again, SciQuest were huge in what we were doing. Um, and then when the zip came along, it virtually just killed the SciQuest, bang. There's a little piece of uh, paper. I just found a little piece of paper inside this. Um, what have we got? Let's have a look. Looks like a wrapper from a lolly or uh, candy as uh, Americans would say. What we would call a lolly or sweets. Crown. It says crown printed on it, but it looks, whatever it is, it's grape flavored. I didn't know that. So, hmm, anyhow, that was inside the CD-ROM drive. Um, I do not know why, but it was. Now the mechanism itself looks pretty good. Um, I got one of these once and I opened it up. When I opened it up, this lens here was melted. Um, and obviously if that lens is melted, you're, you're gone. It's a goner. But this all looks okay. I don't really see an issue there. So that's all nice. So it's just this part here we need to have a look at. Um, it's only a grape if you find a bunch of them. Is it? Is it really? Um, and remember the, um, the, was it Sony Super Drive or something like that? And that was a, it was a drive that would read floppy disks, but it would also read their proprietary Super Drive disks, which held, I think it was 20 megabytes on a disk or something like that, or maybe more. I can't remember, but they were a nifty little invention. All right, let's have a look at this under the microscope. I think this is probably going to look awful, as they usually do. These boards are inside these um, caddy load, um, let me just change the scope here. The boards in these caddy load CD-ROM drives are rubbish quality. Uh, comparing them to working, say, with a Macintosh logic board, there's a much better build quality going on. These are really kind of cheap and nasty. Pretty sure there are only two layers, but I could be wrong. Just a layer on the top, layer on the bottom, so nothing overly complex there. Uh, and it is really common with these to get lots of nasty corrosion around these caps. Like that. Nasty. Nasty. Yeah, see, things like that, that shouldn't be green. Just putting it out there. Wow, there is actual liquid here, actual in liquid form liquid liquid. Um, this really w does need to be done now. I assume that liquid is coming out of this cap here. That's where it appears to be ground zero. I think it's this guy here is the leaker, but we've actually got liquid state. It hasn't actually had a chance to dry up yet. So that's amazing. I've never seen that. Imation super disc, there you go. Um, it would be a Sultana by now. 120 megabytes, there you go. <laughs> I found coins in a cedar arm drive. I, I've had that too. I had a computer that was brought here for repair once when I opened it up, it had coins in it. Um, I can't even remember what it was. It was something very old though. Something sent to me by Madeline McAndrews. Okay. This is bad. Look at this. Look at this. Far out. It's very bad. Oh no. This definitely needs a good old clean. I would really like to have been doing this, let's say about a year ago. I suspect it would not have been as bad little guy here. But we've got to whip these guys off, so let's begin, shall we? Tweezers. Come on, tweezers. 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 
warm myself up with a hot air station while I'm looking for my dinner. Come on, man. Right, who stole my tweezers? Tell me now, I don't want to get mad. Ugh. I'll find some. I'll find some. Don't worry, they're probably on the floor. I mean, I have like four pairs of them, uh, and I have four pairs of them because I keep losing them. Invariably, everything ends up on the floor. That's the kind of natural state of things. I'm just looking at all of the interesting things on the floor at the moment, but I don't see any tweezers. Now, I know there are some tweezers here somewhere, and I'm probably just not seeing them. They're probably right in front of me, but I'm just not seeing them. Yeah, what did you do today? Oh, I watched Bruce try and find tweezers. Just give it a twist or cut it off. On this particular board, I definitely will not be doing that. Uh, these boards are really, really um, weak. And I would say that if I gave these caps a bit of a tug, I would be, that sounded like I was rolling over tweezers. Uh, if I gave them a bit of a tug, I suspect I would pull the pad off. Um, that, I feel, is almost a mathematical certainty. I am being visited by a chicken. Hello, chicken. Hello. Uh, sometimes when I'm working in here and I'm trying to make a bit of space, I just give things a bit of a push to the side. Guess what I just found? There we go. We can begin now. I find this tweet. I did. I actually did that once with a pair of tweezers. It was falling off the desk. Oh man, that smells! Uh, the tweezers were falling off the desk, and uh, and I just like kind of like knee jerk reaction. I just closed my legs to stop the tweezers from falling down, and then they fell down like that in between my legs, and I just stabbed the crap out of myself. It did not make me feel smart. It just blew up. It just went to pop. It went to pop. So, quick question in the chat here, and also this is a question to people who are watching this afterwards as well. Do you have a Quadra 840AV in your collection? Oops, that was off camera, sorry folks. Now, one thing that regularly happens when I'm uh, uh, ow, when I'm burning myself on capacitors, when I'm working on these, is in this little cluster around here, as I'm removing these caps, I also manage to remove some of these components up here. So I am going to try very hard to remove the cap without removing any additional components. Hello, chicken. Hello. Oh, he's about to blow. You can't take any more of it, Captain. 650 is the best quadra I've got. No 840 AV yet. Yeah, the um... <laughs> uh, I have a quadra 700, no 840 AV. Yeah, 650 is one that I only just got recently. Um, I picked that one up in a, in a lot uh, with some others, with an another, another SE30, because, you know, you can't... 
You can't have too many SE30s, that's just written, that's written in stone. Um, so I now have three and a half SE30s, and I say half because one of them I have a logic board which is still not working. I'm sure you guys, some of you will have seen the work that I did on that one. And it's, uh, yeah, well, let's just say it was occupying a little bit too much of my time. I had to stop and start working on some customer jobs. <clears throat> I've got two problematic computers here. Uh, well, I've got heaps, but I've got two in particular that I need to be working on. Uh, and one is a Mac 2 that doesn't work. And the other one is a 2FX that doesn't work. Careful, 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 careful. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. There we go. I'll let this cool because I don't want to rip any more components off by accident. Quadra 840 logic board is crazy hard to repair. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. I actually don't like repairing them at all. Oh, it's still stuck. Thank you. So we're gonna to have to do a little bit of cleaning up around here because this component fell off and I really don't like the look of these joins here. Yeah, see that's not even stuck on properly. <coughs> um, in the Quadra range, I have... Do we count an LC7475 as a Quadra? I mean, and it's a Quadra 605 if you put the little jumper on. So we'll half count the LC475 that I have. I have a Quadra, or Centra 650, but, you know, let's just call it a Quadra. I have a Quadra 900, Quadra 700, now a Quadra 840AV. I think that's it. Oh, and a Quadra 660AV. Uh, oh, and a 610. I've got a Quadra 610 as well. And I've got a noisy chicken. All right, let's clean this up a little bit here. This is a little bit on the messy side. You know, where do I put that component? I don't want it to go too far away. I put him somewhere. He's here somewhere. Better put him. Where do I put that component? I have a tendency to just sort of put them on top of a, an IC or something. Let's see who that is. Who's the noisy chicken? There you are. Shush. 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 She can't hear me. Some overclocking options for the 650, yeah. I see if I'm 475 with speed up and 605 jumper. Uh, oh, Quadra 630, I've got one of those as well, except it's an LC 630, so yeah. Um, now I need to find this component where I put it. Oh, there it is. I took it off the board entirely. You know what I'm going to do so that I don't lose it? I'm going to pop it in this little container here. There we go. Uh, hello, Dana. How are you today? Have you heard anything from Jay? There's going to be trouble. We're doing a live stream and Jay doesn't even turn up. I don't know who he thinks he is. All right, let's smother this in uh, some flux. Right, let's use this one because this one has a nice smell. <laughs> oh dear. Leave it. Always asking me to live stream and it doesn't turn up. Uh, 
Oh man, I'm getting a lot of smoky smoky. I probably should use my fume extractor. You've been fed chicken, so shut up. Shut it. Yeah, the, um, the 605 and the LC475, they have brittle plastics in a big way. Okay. Get this looking a little bit nicer, I kind of... There we go. Hey. There we go. Okay. Let's get these components back on. Too much hot air. Too much. Yeah, shush. It, it like does this sometimes and it just goes on and on and on and then it just stops. She just stops. It is a she. We do know that. Even though it's behaving like a he, it is a she. Shush! Silencio! Just checking to see. You may not speak English. Okay, now I'm going to try and clean this up without losing it. Or damaging it. Shut up! Oh, craps. what I hate about these components. <sighs> that leg, barely hanging on. It's freaking me out. What is it? I can't even read what that says. It just says B or 8 or something. That's going to be a hard component to identify. Having said that, if I do lose this, I do have a spare one of these boards where the guts, I and mean, this component is probably fried as well, you know. Who here does not own a BBC computer? I do not. <laughs> Oopsie. My uh, 610's not too bad. I've actually got a spare 610 case as well. Uh, it's just up there. You can't see it, but I can. I'm looking at it right now. Um, it wasn't too bad. It's it's probably got more brittle just in the last kind of year or so. Uh, what I do do with those cases, that's the 6100, 610, 660AV, all of the one in the family size pizza box. Um, the, I uh, file off the little bit, which, so there's, there's tabs, there's tabs on the back and they clip onto a thing. I file off the little lump that makes them clip so that when they go down, they just sit. I mean, you know, um, it's fine because, I mean, if you've got a monitor sitting on them, that's just, they're all held in place. They're not going anywhere. But uh, that's what I do. That's my thing. Oh, that is not in a good position.
I minimise the meltage on this plastic. Uh. I don't even know what he's talking about. What? 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 I just lost a component. I just blew it off the board. <clears throat> All right, I'm going to turn the heat down on this. I mean, sorry, the speed, because I'm just going to going to cause carnage at the rate I'm going. This is the BBC. Rolled. Dana, could you please reply to Jay and say, I put a link in the chat, FFS. And if he doesn't want to check the chat for these links that I send for his benefit, uh, what Australia had in their classrooms for educational purposes. They have the, some of the earliest ones we had out here were a thing called the micro beat. Uh, there was a, um, a kind of a, a thing here when it came to computers in classrooms, they needed to have a certain component of Australian madenessness about them. So we were using Australian computers here and even later on when we went to Apple IIe's, uh, they had components in them that were made in Australia that then allowed them to qualify to be used in, in Australian classrooms. But yeah, the early ones were micro B computers then. They are very collectible nowadays. Um, uh, so there. Southeast. I was not properly notified by iMessage. Well, it's in the chat. There is evidence of that. I put it in, I think, about half an hour, maybe a bit more prior to the stream going live. Now, I do not know why you uh, didn't get it, if you didn't get it. Um, it's the same chat. Same chat I've been using for donkey's years. Um, could be an, an Apple glitch. But uh, anyhow, we're working on a CD-ROM drive here today, Jay. Um, this is... We've already recapped the floppy drive, and now we're doing the CD-ROM drive. This is a, C a Sony, um, um, what do you call it, uh, caddy load CD-ROM drive. And these things suffer from really bad capacitor leakage. And this is one of the first devices I've ever opened up where the electroly electrolyte was still in liquid form on the board. So it was actually, it wasn't, it hadn't dried up and gone gungy yet it was actually a liquid on the board. Um, so kind of good thing that I didn't try and fire it up or anything like that. Oh man, that reeks. I don't even know what that smells like, but it's not normal. Mm -hmm. 
I would also like to have my own microbee at some point. Uh, they're very expensive out here. Um, they have just, again, what's happened is the sorts of people that are looking for them are the sorts of people with a lot of disposable cash. And so uh, they're asking, you know, people are they're just outbidding each other and making these things incredibly expensive. Um, I, I would like to own a microbee one day. I mean, I when I started getting into computers, it was at that time, and the microbees were probably one of the first computers I got exposed to. One of my friends, uh, his father worked at Apple, so I got to use an Apple II, I think it was probably originally an Apple II, and then there was an Apple II Euro Plus that he had. Um, and so I was definitely in the Apple camp very early on, um, but at school we were using microbees, and then at home I had a computer called a VZ200, which was essentially a laser 200. Uh, you can uh, find information about them on the Googles. It was a laser 200 uh, and then it was uh, kind of rebadged by an Australian company out here called Dick Smith Electronics, the electronic Dick. And uh, it, uh, it was rebadged as a VZ, um, you know, and obviously ROMs modified and everything to be a VZ 200. Uh, it was a color computer, had uh, in its low res mode, I think it could display eight colors. In its high res mode, it could display, well, it could also display eight, but only four at a time. You had to change graphics mode. So you could, graphic mode one had um, had four colors and the other graphics mode had another four colors. So had 16, was it eight? I think eight kilobytes of RAM. Uh, I had a 32 expansion, I think. Was it a 16 expansion? I don't know, whatever it was, it was an expansion. Uh, and it had tape drive. And it was, it was good. I, I learned to, I learned to program on it. I learned a lot about computers on it at the time. Uh, and I still have one. I have a VZ200. I also have a VZ300. Um, and uh, yeah, I like him. Um, and they are part of Australian computing history. Is nice. Just making sure these pads have got a nice fresh coat of uh, solder on them because that will make the uh, new solder adhere much easier. I'm just going to smash this with a toothbrush. Now, I actually bought very specific capacitors for doing these because these are so close together. It's really hard to put in the normal size tantalums that I would use for these. You just can't get to the, into the middle of them. So I bought some smaller um, caps for these, um, which I will, I'm about to pull out. Uh, price check on a Visa 200. All right, let's have a look. Let's see if there are any on here on eBay at the moment. I'll be giving you the price in Australian dollars. You may have to do some conversionables. Uh, excuse me. New. eBay.com.au. There we go. VZ200. And then we'll check here. Oh, there's a 16K RAM expansion there for 200 bucks. That's the sale price. It's not, it, that's the asking price. It's not the sale price. Oh, we've got the VZ200 Giant Book of Games. I think I have that one. We've got the manual. Oh, there's quite a few things here. Now let's look at sold items. Because remember, that is the way you find out how much things are selling for. And we will have a look in uh, computers. There we go. All right. Nope. Oh, here we go. There's a, here's a, a lot. Uh, let me just see if I can share this with you. I might be able to, because I've got, uh, I have the technology here. Uh, yeah. Here we go. And I'm just going to, because I know I do have some sort of, what have we got here? Oh, look at that. Uh, are, you, are you guys able to see my screen now? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's all good. Okay, so. Oh, look at that changing okay uh, so the, here is a lot here a Dick Smith vintage computer model VZ 200 so this is the original 200 here with a tape drive we've got um, uh, let's go see original listing right let's have a look see what's here 
So that's the VZ200 there. As you can see, it's a rubber keyboard. The VZ300 that came out later on actually had uh, proper keys rather than these rubbery, rubbery things. I'm not sure what that is. It's hard to tell uh, that cartridge that's next to it. It could just be the RAM expansion, but it's had the sticker removed from it. So it's hard to tell. And there's the power supply because you can just use a standard power supply with these. If they don't come with one, it's fine. Uh, and then you've got, there's no tape driver that comes with this one. Interesting. It's got the book. First book of programs, I'm pretty sure I have that as well. So we've got demonstration tape, which you just got with it as standard. What's that? Something, something calendar or something? Don't know that one at all. Don't know that. Uh, tennis, uh, some sort of match thing. Oopsie. And the Visa 300 Star Blaster. Star Blaster was probably asteroids, I would think. Um, What's that? So let's, was it Shawnee? I, I, this, oh, what's that? It's a dem, demodulator? Oh, okay. Don't know what that is. Uh, so 438 Australian dollars. I think that is a little high, but again, you know, what are you going to do? I mean, there's $300 sold for a pair of uh, joysticks for them, for the Visa 200 or Visa 300. 375 for just the VZ. 200. Um, here's a nice little bundle here that's come from another country, United States. Yeah. So anyhow, that's that. We can uh, skip back onto the uh, other stuff now. Uh, let's go to uh, there. There we go. Um, so for those who might be interested, that was that was it. Um, Modem, no, no, this, I think, I don't think there was ever a modem. I could be wrong, but I don't think there was ever a modem for the VZ. Um, it came out in 1983, I think. I, I could be wrong. I mean, again, you could probably Google to confirm, but I'm pretty sure they came out in 1983, but it could be another time. And I think it cost $100. It was like $99 or something when we got it. That was the computer. You then had to pay extra for other stuff. Tape drive cost extra. We got a little printer plotter for it as well. A little tiny printer, a little four color uh, uh, plotter printer. They printed on little, little you know, almost like paper, like uh, receipt paper. It was, I don't know, it was about 10 centimeters wide, something like that. Um, Uh, what is a Mac clip? Can someone tell me what a Mac clip is? Tell them they're dreaming. Well, I was showing you the sold prices there. So that wasn't the asking price. That was what those items actually sold for. So um, someone didn't think they were dreaming. That is a reference to an Australian movie. It's a term that has become part of the Australian vernacular. It's a movie called The Castle. And in it, um, there is a character that spends most of his time looking in a little trading, you know, like a trading newspaper, like people used to do before eBay, and uh, and he would just be looking for stuff, just pointless stuff, and then he'd say, you know, how much is it? And he's like, he wants three fifty. Oh, tell him he's dreaming, and that has just become part of Australian vernacular. You know, the idea of saying, tell him he's dreaming. Another term that came from that movie is How's the Serenity? And another one is The Vibe of the Thing. It was a film that definitely did have an impact on Australian vernacular, there's no doubt about that. Just cleaning this up, I mean... Pfft. I mean... Pfft. I think I could just keep cleaning fraternity with this thing. It's bad. It's bad. <coughs> Mac Clip is an accelerator for some 6804 maps. Ah, Max, okay, fair enough. Yes, I don't know anything about that one. 
I don't know why I don't know anything about it, but you know, again, most of my sort of Mac experiences come from my own personal experience, so if I've never seen it, I've never seen it. I'm still after um, one of those Thunder new bus cards. What are they? What were they? Super Mac Thunder 24 or something? I can't. I can't exactly remember. I used to have one of those, and they just kicked ass. I would love to get hold of one of them. Thunder. Someone will. Someone will know. Someone will know. That is. Uh, that's definitely one of the things I want. I mean, they, those accelerated graphics cards, fantastic. See, even this um, Radius Video Vision that I've got that does video capture, as a graphics card, it's garbage. I mean, it's not accelerated, you know. I mean, if you grab a window and you move it from side to side, it's um, um, it's really slow, slow redraw. It's not a properly accelerated graphics card. I do have one or two accelerated graphics cards, but there was the... Um, uh, you know, sort of, I think it was Super Mac something Thunder or Thunder 24 or something like that. That was a great one. Had a little add-on board. So you had the main board and then you had an add-on board on top. Um, all right. Now I need a recapping guide for this because I can't remember this stuff in my, uh, my brain because that's not the sort of brain I have. Um, is that it? CD 300. There you go. Just reading the chat here, sorry folks, just checking it out. Okay, so we've got, these are all, these four that I'm working on at the moment are 100 microfarad, 6.3 volts. So if I grab my little thing of tants, tantalums, uh, I've got my 100, 6.3 volts. I'm gonna just go to my top view here for a second. This is them here, right there, 100 microfarad, 6.3 volts. But in amongst this, I have these bigger ones, like that, but then I also have these smaller ones, like that. And it's the smaller ones I'm going to be using. I actually ended up buying some smaller ones by accident. And then I found out they were just so much better for use on these, um, on these CD-ROMs. So I bought a few more. That's them there. This is gonna feel so good after washing this. What was it C3PO said? This oil bath is gonna feel so good, something like that, I can't remember. Is anyone listening to C3PO? Probably not. Sir, sir. Okay. Here we go. What are we looking at here? I've got it that way around. Let's look at it that way around so it's plus on the right, plus on the bottom. Yep, we're all good. Super Mac Thunder 2GX, that sounds right. That does sound right. When I say that, it just rolls off the, to the tongue properly. Um, I would definitely like to have one of them. So once I've finished recapping this board, I'm gonna give this a good old ultrasonic cleaning. And then, um, and then I will sort of reassemble it and pop it into my 840AV and test it out. Uh, one of the fiddliest parts of working with these is putting the front panel, oh, microscope view. Putting the front panel on. Um, do do do. and getting the little door to function properly. Because there's a little kind of uh, door on the front. Just let me move this thing. Why am I, why am I doing this at an angle? What, what idiot does that? Um, there's a, the way it works is that it's, it says something like load CD or something when it's empty. And then when you put a caddy in, it flips over and says caddy loaded. Something like that. And if you don't put the front panel on properly, that little mechanism that changes the message there doesn't work properly. 
And I find that's about the fiddliest part of working, of putting these things back together. Um, when I um, when I first was discovering computers at school and whatnot, we, as I mentioned before, we had these micro B computers, and there was a game on there called Taipan, and it was you know you could argue that it was an educational game because it was teaching you about trying to buy things and then sell them for a profit. So you would, uh, as I guess it was a bit like that. Um, what's it? I think it's the Oregon Trail or something like that. I think it's, it's sort of like that, in that you would. Um, you would take your boat, the Taipan, uh, to places, and you would buy things with some money that you had, and then you would try and take them somewhere else and sell them at a profit. And, uh, oops. Um, and then there were risks along the way. You could be attacked by pirates or, you know, weather could wipe you out, that sort of stuff, so. Um, and I really liked playing the game. I got a lot of pleasure from it. So uh, I went home and I wrote my own version of it on my VZ. Um, and I changed it a little bit so it was a bit easier to win because that's just how I like playing games. I love playing with cheat codes and stuff like that. Dana is here. Hello there, Dana. Um, I've uh, missed you on social media lately, uh, Dana. I haven't seen... Uh, it's, I think, uh, taking a bit of a break from social media, if I, uh, if I am to understand it correctly. Um, which, of course, I don't really blame you for. Um, Dana is the one responsible for those absolutely amazing kind of illustrations of Max that never were, but probably should have been in many cases. Uh, we in a Macyak show yesterday we were actually just talking about how we would love I have to remember this one doesn't want a cap I should not be putting a cap on this one so I won't clean it I'm going to leave it as is um, we were talking about in the Macyak show uh, too much, so much social and too much media I guess <laughs> um, the, there was, we were talking about what what is a device that we'd love them to bring back? Uh, you know, we would love Apple to bring back, you know, to resurrect the line. And of course, one of the ones that we'll talk about is we would love for them to bring out a modern version of the, um, uh, the G4 iMac, you know, the lampshade Mac. We would love for that design to come out with a modern, like retina screen and, uh, and a modern, like, you know, Apple silicon chip inside it, something like that. And, I, you know, that was a good one. But then we were also saying we would love for them to bring out the big old MacBook Pro, the 17-inch MacBook Pro, which, of course, hasn't existed for a while, but bring that out, you know, with the CD-ROM drive, you know, with loads and loads of ports down the side, uh, with a retina screen and with a, you know, silicon um, uh, CPU in it. It would be uh, great to have that. And we were just talking about how we, we, we were designing these... Um, fictional kind of Max, and that uh, that brought up obviously your amazing stuff uh, in our discussion. I think it always must be an incredibly rewarding thing when people discover those photos and then they say, "Is this real?" You think, "Yep, yes." <laughs> How's the weather in Bathurst? It's bloody cold here, so I hate to think what it's like there. <coughs> uh, weird LCD prototypes from the early 90s with the counterbalance display and, and pyramids in dark blue. <laughs> Does anything on that board need a continuity test? Um, you know, you know, Theo, uh, I think there is an argument for that. 
Um, but I'm, I've am i kind of done enough of these that look like this and not had any problems. I might have a little bit, once I clean this up, I might have a closer look at some of these veers, like here. Uh, as long as I can scrape the top off and find copper underneath, I'm usually pretty confident they're going to be continuous. Minus six, there you are. That's in uh, Celsius, friends, and that is not, not the sort of weather I like at all. I'm definitely a summer person, um, and minus six is not for me, no. I'll just stay in bed. <laughs> yeah, I see Enzo. Enzo wants me, wants me to use the, the Kaiwitz KM601 multimeter um, to check for some continuity here. I might, I might just have to do that. Get the Kaiwitz KM601 digital multimeter. Um, links in the description. Discount code. So much multimeter for such a low price. Um, Had someone at my house once was doing some work on something and they wanted to check something and they said, do you have a multimeter? And I was like, have you heard of the Kai Wheats KM601 digital multimeter? And they were basically sorry they ever asked. <gasps> Look what I did to this component. I moved it. How careless I am. Careless Bruce, they call me. Better than careless whisper. Doing a lot of scrapey scrape here. I re for this, this amount of scraping, I really should have one of those little grindy things. I don't have one. <sighs> we got to 32 degrees C here today. Oh no, that is more my kind of weather. That is a nice mild summer's day. I like that. Because that's the other thing um, in with Bathurst where we're talking about that's uh, Minus 60 other morning. Um, that it gets blazingly hot there as well. stupid green inductor really gets in the way with this capacitor. I generally have to get my uh, eh, eh, my other uh, uh, soldering tip to so I can squeeze in there. Okay, let's sort out this chip, this IC that I've managed to dislodge. I'm going to need to clean it up a bit. Is this a mess? <gasps> it's lost a leg! It's lost a friggin' leg! Look! Look, lost the leg. Consign it. What a mess, people. What a mess. Ugh. Never easy, is it? Stupid thing. Stupid. It's so stupid. Yeah, not as hot as Western Sydney, okay, yeah. We, I don't know what this is in Fahrenheit, so we'll probably have to con confirm. Last year we had a pretty, or the last couple of years, we've had a pretty mild summer because of uh, um, La Nina. But that has passed now, and we're now in El Nino, and that one, uh, that one is where we more likely get uh, uh, very hot, very dry summer. So that's what we're heading for this year. Oopsie. 
stupid. So, and uh, on the, when it's like that, I mean, we are typically, we have quite long runs of temperatures in the high 30s. Uh, and then a few days in the low 40s, 40 sort of, 43, that sort of thing. Um, 45, I think, is the hottest I've ever recorded here where I live. Um, but I'm not sure what 45 is in for hair and height. But I can tell you it's very hot. It's the sort of weather where when you're standing out in it, I mean, first of all, you don't want to be out in it for too long because it's really not good for you. Um, but when you're standing out in it, uh, you, you know, the heat kind of burns your face. It's very, it's quite uncomfortable, quite unpleasant. Stay still. I'm going to put him around the other way. Yeah. Yeah, so anyhow, it's uh Oopsie. Oopsie. I mean, you know, where we are, I mean we've got very good air conditioning here. You kind of need to where where I live here, you really need to have good air conditioning if you're you know, gonna have any chance of like sleeping in the middle of summer. We're just gonna figure out whether we can use this chip or whether it's a lost cause. Um, now at the moment you can see the bottom of these feet, no you can't see anything. You can see the bottom of these feet are kind of gray and yucky. Uh, if I'm going to have any hope of securing this back onto the board, they will need to be shiny. So I need to clean these up without destroying them. And that is always a challenge. And this may well be a component that can be replaced. And as I did say before, I do have another, I've got a spare board, I've got a, somewhere, it might even be in here somewhere, but I've got uh, one that I've got a big label on it that says parts only because it melted, inside was melted, but the board itself was largely okay. So I can possibly get hold of one of these. It's just that when you have a component like this, even if this is a component that's still readily available, you know, you can't just buy one. I'll probably end up having to buy 10 of them or something like that, minimum. So if I can get this one happy, um, I would prefer it. Obsidian Zenon, hello. How's your amputee going? Yes. Ah, oh, Nate is here as well. Hello, Nate. I haven't seen you in a while. What's been going on there? Or am I, or am I just imagining that you weren't there and you were? I feel like it's been a while since I've seen you at a live stream. Busy with work stuff. Oh, I know that feeling. I had a classic one today or yesterday. It's something that actually been forming over the week. We finally figured out what the problem was yesterday. Um, someone who had access to a database inadvertently logged in and went and, and changed 17,000 17, records in a database. He uh, obviously wasn't sure what he was doing and he went in and 
uh, changed all of their surnames to new member. 17,000 records. And this is the problem that you have when you have, give people access who don't know what they're doing. You give people access to powerful software without adequate training. And uh, yeah, that's been a fun little thing for the last few days for me. Let's flip them over and see what we can do to them from the other side. How'd you come? There we go. Uh, I nabbed a bunch of the Apple Media Kit CDs that Steve put up on Archiving Org recently, figured out how to get good output from PageMaker 4 and the PDS from that are just lovely. Yeah, I did the same because I got hold, I don't know if it was that one or another one, and I got all the fonts loaded up and uh, you know printed out some PDFs from those files. And of course, those beautiful illustrations. Have you seen those Illustrator files of all the computers? Um, they're just magnificent. Um, so, uh, yeah. I'm not a big fan of PageMaker, I must confess. Back in the days when we were using it, we used to use Quark Express. And I, I think Quark Express was always a better product. Uh, there were the PageMaker fanatics out there that, you know, refused to use Quark. PageMaker was their thing. Uh, and that's fine. That's all right. But for me, uh, it was always Quark Express was the one that I like to use. And Illustrator over freehand as well. I mean, there were some people that were freehand nuts. I think Dana, other Dana, Dana does stuff. I think you were a freehand person, weren't you, sir? I was always an Illustrator person. I didn't used to be. I was a freehand person through and through. And then one of my customers came in and said, oh, you use freehand? Oh, Illustrator's so much better. And I'm like, oh, man, no, it's not. You can't do crap with Illustrator. It's terrible. And she actually just gave me a few little pointers on it. And I was like, oh, wow. Okay, fair enough. And then I was, I was a changed person. I went to Illustrator and stayed there. Now, before I go to huge lengths to actually try and uh, attach something to this nub here, um, I am going to just check and make sure that uh, the pin is needed, because sometimes you don't need all the pins. But on one that's only eight pins, we probably do. But we'll check. Uh, and so what I'm going to do here is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to this little spot here, and we're going to clean these up. I really thought this was going to be quick. I thought to myself, this live stream is going to be so fast because this computer, it's just a CD-ROM and a floppy drive. I mean, how long can that take? Huh. It was this one here. God, they're gungy. Aren't they gungy? <sighs> Everyone, yeah. Um, well, I'll tell you what happened with InDesign. This is a really interesting thing. It was a very clever thing from Adobe, really. And when they decided to kind of get into it. So Adobe, for a while there, they, were, they had PageMaker. They kept that going for a while. And then they brought out InDesign. Because what ended up happening is Adobe ended up acquiring uh, uh, PageMaker. It was never their intention to do so. They were working on their own product. But the opportunity came for them to actually buy PageMaker from Aldus. I think it was Aldus. And, um, and so they ended up buying PageMaker. And they, for a while there, were selling both PageMaker and... And now it's a ground chip by the looks of it. So I may actually be able to get by without it because it's just this pin going to that pin. It's possible, but anyhow. Um, so 
it's, a, it's either a ground or a, a, a voltage, you know, a power in, VCC, whatever. Um, I can test. I'll test it with my Kaiweats KN601 digital multimeter. Links in the description. Um, so, yeah, so the really clever thing that happened with... Um, uh, um, sorry that happened with uh, InDesign was that most studios were already paying for Photoshop and Illustrator. They were using, that was what they were using. They were the main ones they were using, Photoshop and Illustrator. And then uh, Adobe made the bundle of Photoshop, Illustrator and InDesign. It was cheaper to get all three than it was to buy the two individually. So if you wanted to buy Photoshop and then you wanted to buy Illustrator, that would cost more than buying the bundle that had InDesign with it as well. And at the same time, Quark was still charging an absolute mozza for, for upgrades to their software. So anytime you wanted a new, if you wanted to buy it outright or if you wanted to buy an up, upgrade for Quark Express, it cost a fortune. So um, what ended up happening was people were like, well, we've got this InDesign here anyway. It came with the bundle. We've got it here. So I think we probably should give it a try. And that's basically what ended up happening. I mean, I was very resistant to InDesign in the first place because I knew Quark Express so well. Um, but uh, no, it's not ground. Okay, that's ground there. This is not ground, so this must be VCC or voltage there. Um, yep, there it is. It's, it's 12 or 5 volts. I'm not sure which one. Um, so I don't know, I, I might be able to get by without restoring that pin, but I'll probably try and restore it anyway. Yeah, I, I would agree with you, Dana. I mean, what Quark ended up doing, well, Quark essentially committed suicide, really, didn't they? I mean, they just, um, eh, eh. Come on, come on. Um, uh, they just kept the prices really high, just assuming that everyone would keep using their product. Um, and then people were just like, no, nah, we've got this InDesign. And of course, within a few versions, InDesign was pretty good. It had some really nifty features. Um, and so... Yeah, I mean, now I use InDesign. InDesign's what I use because I've got the Adobe suite. I pay the subscription. Uh, and so I've got uh, it's I've got the, the full suite, so you get everything in that lot. Premiere as well. I don't use Premiere, but I've got it there. So Quark is still going, and you can actually develop apps using Quark Express now. Uh, you can build web pages from it. I have hate the way it builds web pages. Absolutely despise it. It builds them like apps, virtually, pretty much. Oh, shut up. Stupid chicken. Right. Now let's see what we can do with this chip. Whether we can kind of grind out some stuff. It was, uh, there, okay, so that's like that, yep, that's pin one there, so that's the way it goes, that's the way love goes, like that, and then I'm going to see if I can do something with this, let's just see, time to get out the old variable speed Dremel, and I say that because this Dremel speeds up while I'm using it, what have we got in there at the moment, oh, I've got my little uh, what do you call it? Uh, via opener on there. My little custom made part. So let's get a thing. Quark uh, Express newest release is just six months old. Hmm. Take a really long time getting an OS 10 version out. They, they may well have, I don't remember, I think. Oh, geez, yeah, because the truth is that um, the place that I used to work at, we were really slow to adopt. Quark Express, and that had a lot to do with the software we were using. Sorry, we were really slow to adopt OS X, um, and so that stuff could have been going on 
Uh, but I just didn't know about it. I'll probably have to mute when I use this uh, Dremel because it is a little bit on the loud side. But basically what I'm going to be trying to do is just take the top of this off to expose a little bit of metal, just enough for me to get something soldered onto the tip of it. Okay. All right. All right, all right, all right, all right. All right. Okay, okay. Two Cock Express files in 12 years, yeah. Um, I do work for a studio. Uh, well, actually, I think they're, I think they're sort of wrapping up now. I, I think they're um, uh, closing, closing their business doors. But this studio, um, I'm not, I could be wrong, but I think they are. But this studio, they're still using Quark. Um, I think it comes largely from stubbornness, actually. But I guess if it's what you want to use, you're hyper happy to pay for it. Is that, is that there or is it busted off? Oh, it's there. So I've got this teeny weeny weeny little uh, um, little grindy thing. It's, I think it's the smallest one you can get from a Dremel. Alrighty, now here's what we want to do. I want you guys to tell me if this is too freaking loud and if it's too freaking loud then I'll mute it. This is blunt. I might start with a bigger one. That one I think is too small. It's going to take me a year and a half to get through that. Oh, you can't see it. Stupid Bruce. So stupid. Okay, we'll start with a bigger one. And we'll move to the smaller one. Digital die cutter. Wow. Wow, that is pretty darn awesome. Digital die cutter. Gosh. Hey, this doesn't fit. It's too thin. What? What? What have I done? Why is... Why, why? What's happened? What? 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 I'm gonna have to put a different attachment on here for some unknown reason. This is too narrow. have to use this instead. Boop doop. I have not tried the Vivor flexible drive motor Dremel tool. This is a genuine, genuine Dremel Dremel. Uh, that I'm using here at the moment. That's more like it. Hey, look at that. We've got ourselves some copper. What's the colour of a two cent piece? Copper, copper. Whoopsie, don't you fall off. Is 
Is that? That's broken. I may as well throw that away. No point in keeping something that's broken. I've got that one, that's the one I've got. So this one now, now, your heels. Can I fit that in there? Or am I gonna have to, oh you stupid thing. Oh no, it fits. <sighs> right. Right, isn't that nice? Mantis Elite Microscope. Is that a, um, like a, an analog optical one or is it a digital one? Now in actual fact, all I need to do, if we look at this here, where it goes, these two pins are connected. So really all I need to do with this, I mean, I may not even need to do this, but is bridge that from there to there, and then we just solder this one on. So that's probably what I'm gonna do, because I think that will be more secure. Oh no. World in crisis, chaos. Oh, piss. I've stuffed it. Oh no, oh no. How did that happen? Who's responsible? Who can I fire? Okay. Well, there's people here that I don't think I've said hello to. I don't think I've said hello to uh, Paul Byerly, Sam Perna, Sloopy Malibu. Um, I'm saying hello to you all now. I apologise that I haven't said hello. If you have joined recently and you want to say hello, please say hello. How many people are viewing at the moment? I figure, oh, well, there's about 30 people. So hello to you all. Um, I am trying a little bit of... I see rescue here. Yeah. Right. And get ourselves a little modicum of flux on this. And then we're just gonna try and make this happen. I need to apply heat to melt the uh, enamel on these wires. And of course we need a stack of solder on here as well. Ow, hot, Bernie's, Bernie's hot. Now, I'm just going to lift this off for a sec because I'm just concerned. I, want, I really should have got some solder onto the uh, little bit of copper on here first. Six Rossmans. That was only. That was like about half a Rossman. That one, if that. Rossman loves his flux, and why not? I mean, you know. 
I have must confess though, I really don't watch much of Rossman anymore. I don't find his uh, content as entertaining as I used to. Uh, and that's fine. He's moving in the direction that he wants to move in. I'm not going to argue with that. Um, each to their own. It's probably working out profitable for him. There we go. How good does that look? Whoops, I'll get it in camera. How good does that look? Don't don't tell me the truth. I don't want to know. Oh. Now I'm gonna get this on here before I lose it, because I'm good at losing things at this desk. Oh god, that chicken's being so noisy. Silence! Call for silence. Silence! Something's bipping. Ah, it's my multimeter. He's saying, you haven't used me in a while, so I'm thinking about switching off. How do you feel about that? That's just what my multimeter said to me then. This must be what open heart surgery is like, for sure. Just listening mostly, no worries. I won't ask you any complicated questions then. I'll, I'll uh, allow you to just keep doing what you're doing. Oops. The amount of work that I just put into keeping this chip alive, I don't know if that was smart or stupid or... <gasps> Look what I just did. Look what I just did. Go back. There we go. I'm really not happy with this pad here. Or that chicken. Oh, that chicken's lucky we're eating out tonight. That's all I can say. Do a bit of a chicken fricassee. Beautiful. Hello, computer booter. Are you a new visitor to this channel? I do not recognize your name, but that doesn't mean that you haven't been around before because I have a brain like a sieve. That's my thing, sieve brain. going to a, what would you call it, sort of like a uh, fundraising dinner tonight. My wife likes to go to these sorts of things from time to time and she described this one to me and I was like, yeah, I wouldn't mind going to that. Sounds fun. If you do, wrap it on. Kind of place. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 I, the, the, the thing with, with, you know, doing all these sorts of repairs is that they, once the solder's melted and I don't have to touch it anymore, we're good. So I could have probably wrapped that lead around a little bit, got it more secure and everything, but it's sort of like, it doesn't really matter. Once it's in place and once that solder has dried, it, it'll be fine. It's, it'll be safe as houses. Uh, it'll be like a bought one. Um, so it's it's secure now. 
I don't need to touch it again. I shouldn't need to touch it again. So I'm content. That's me, this is my content phase. I have to get dooted up for this dinner tonight though, that's the only problem. I'm gonna have to, I, I think I, I need to be in, in, in clothes, not just jeans. And I just wear jeans virtually all the time. I mean, I even wear jeans to meetings because I'm a, I'm a developer, I'm a coder. People expect coders to wear jeans. Don't like the look of that one. This is our dev guy. Oh yeah, jeans, yeah. So this has actually got two vias going through. I think they go through to the same thing on the other side. We'll have a look, shall we? Yeah, that's this. So there's two vias going through this. Even though that one looks really bad, I might actually just run a wire because. I have watched a few times. Well, there you go. I will make a, a, a more concerted effort to remember your name. There we go. This is probably unnecessary, but let's just let's just call it a precaution. just because of how ugly this one looks. Boop, 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 boop. There we go. A precaution. Whoopsie. Larry. There we go. So anyone who is joining just recently, I will just uh, give a quick little recap of what's going on here. I have a Quadra 840 AV, which I'm in the process of restoring. I am also making a video on that restoration process, which is um, a lot of it has already been filmed and I'm hoping I might, e might even be able to finish it this weekend, which would make me happy because I need to release some content. Um, I've been slack as when it comes to releasing content. And I am wanting this 840AV to be kind of fully restored, you know, everything done, all fixed, everything good, peachy. And so I am, uh, I am recapping every, every, really every part of it. Well, actually almost all parts of it, but that, that you can find out in the, in the video when I release it. Um, you know, the floppy drive, recapping the floppy drive, recapping the CD-ROM drive, recapping the logic board, and sort of doing the power supply. That's the, uh, that's the iffy bit. Um, I think I've got a dead resistor in my power supply, but it's, I'm really struggling to read the um, colors on it. So I suppose if there's anyone out there with an 840AV and they are happy to open up the power supply, to provide some assistance, uh, it would be appreciated. Um, it's not a, it's not a major disassembly. I can, I can maybe try and nag Steve into doing it for me. Um, I think, I think I owe him some favours at the moment. So he's helped me out with quite a few things lately because he has all this stuff. And they don't really do basements in this part of the world, so even if I wanted as much stuff as he have, I'd have nowhere to put it. I'd have nowhere to put it. No, 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 it's not as bad as 
it's, well, it, this is actually part of the joke, and this is what I was sort of saying to him. I mean, I, you know, I mean, Steve's such a polite human being, but I could tell him he was basically wanting to just um, um, give me the bird um, or tell me to go f off because he's got this 840 AV. Now, admittedly, a lot of the problems that he's encountered with that 840 AV have come, have come about from him attempting to recap it many, many, many years ago when his skills were not uh, skills were not as they are today, and he sort of did some damage in the process. But um, all the uh, analog boards. I can't remember, I have to check. Um, and, uh, and so anyhow, um, sorry, I've just lost the thread here. Uh, yeah, so anyhow, Quadra 840 AV, Steve. Um, and, uh, and so he had, has had a lot of trouble with this. He spent hours and hours and hours trying to get the 840 AV working, you know, um, because of all the problems he was encountering. And then he, um, he then did a video on the um, Rasterops video vision card and he had all sorts of technical problems with that. And then of course I got hold of this 840 AV and apart from having one initial problem when I was uh, recapping it, uh, it just worked. The only thing wrong with it is it's not outputting enough uh, termination power on the external SCSI port. Internal SCSI port, no problem, but on the external one, it's just a little flicker. It's not enough power to actually power up a blue SCSI or a Zulu SCSI. So, not sure what's going on there. I probably should spend some time on it, but I'm not sure I care enough, but you know, we'll see. Um, I keep trying to talk Steve into going back to the 840 AV, but you know, I mean, every now and again, he just gets waves and he's just like, yes, 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 I want to do it. And then he does it for a while and then he gets disillusioned and then he puts it away and forgets about it for a long time. Um, all right, let's uh, replace some caps on this, eh? Uh, what do we need here? We need, we've got one little guy, we'll replace him, 10 microfarad 16. We've got two little guys, two 10 microfarad 16. Let's do those first. 10 microfarad 16. microfarad 16. There's one going there and one going there. Stinky flux. Whoopsie. Got a stripe on the positive side there like that. And we'll pop him over here as well. Let's get some flux down on that. Uh, well, no. <laughs> so, obviously, just a little, quick little update. So, uh, what, uh, this will need to be ultrasonically cleaned. Yes, of course it will. So, it is going into an ultrasonic cleaner. Um, but when it comes to efficiency, uh, this will be going into a smaller one. Uh, the other thing I should also mention is that the gigantic one that I use, that I have in my laundry, I don't use that for electronics. I can but I don't, um, I use that one for cleaning other stuff. You know, I use it for cleaning, oh, you know, big saucepans and things like that. Um, use it for cleaning all sorts of stuff, but um, I have the uh, electronics cleaning solution in the ultrasonic cleaners that you see behind me, which is the 30 litre Vivor and the 10 litre Vivor. Uh, if you are after a, an ultrasonic cleaner, I can highly recommend the Vivor brand. I have done a review on the 30 litre. Uh, if you have a look in the, uh, this video description, you will find links that will take you to the Vivor ultrasonic cleaners. Uh, and you can then just select what size tub you want and order it from there. And I do believe there's even a discount. So just think about that. Um, if you're needing an ultrasonic cleaner, you can do a hell of a lot worse than go out and grab yourself a Vivor. That's for sure. Um, I'm just going to make sure I haven't accidentally created any shorts here. <clears throat> I've got an 840 AV here. I do actually have one here that needs work. 
um, but it, as with all these ones that require long and tedious diagnostics, I just have... Nah, what? Is that bad? No, that's all right. No continuity there. We're all fine. We're fine here. We're fine. So this is, the rest is, the rest are, the rest is, are, is, are, is, will be, one, two, three, 47s. It's nice that even though this is a Sony, it still uses the same size caps as you have on the Max. So three 47 microfarad is used for motorcycle cars. Yeah, see, I mean, the, the thing with these is that, you know, when you're cleaning electronics, you would use a very different detergent to when you're cleaning motorcycle carbs. I'd imagine, like, you, like you'd have some sort of carby cleaner, I suppose, in, in that one, would be my thought. Um, and I would imagine that carby cleaner, because um, carbies are are usually uh, uh, aluminium, I think, are they not? Um, and I think you need special solutions for working with aluminium. Aluminium. Oh crap, that's just, I just got a reminder of something that I have to remember. This is the little gap I need to get into here. And for that, I'm going to use a bent conical tip. Works perfectly. I'll put that to one side and careful not to burn myself on it. I should put it in there, but that's just too hard. Is that SMD tantalum? It surely is. Come on, having trouble transferring the heat down onto the board. There we go. All right, that'll do us. It's not pretty, it's okay. No one's gonna see this. It'll be sealed away. Oh uh, yeah. Oh, here's my stethoscope. I was talking about that earlier. Yeah, I, um, uh, the, those sort of little bendy conicals, those J tips, they are really, really, really good for getting into tight spots. And so for the most part, I like to use a bevel tip, uh, but then there are times where it's just too fat and then I just have to go with something thinner. Dagnabbit. Uh, Joseph Phillips, may I ask some freebie advice? I bought a MacBook, is it MacBook or motherboard? Um, uh, off Fleabay and did not know some Vias had no pins to solder in capacitors. Vias had no pins to solder in capacitors. Any of us me to how to deal with that. Had no pins. Some Vias had no pins to solder in capacitors. I'm not sure I understand the question. Um, I think I need some clarification on that question of what is meant by it. 
are, are you saying they were surface mount components or not really sure happy to try and help if I can uh, it's just the board nothing to solder to just the board. it was just a board nothing to solder to hmm don't know the term so are you saying it's sort of something like what we're looking at here, where it's a flat pad for you to solder onto rather than it being a through hole like this? So this here is a, here's a resistor and it's through hole and it has pins that come out the side and go through a little hole. Or well, the alternative is these ones here, which are surface mount, which just have pads on there and you solder flat onto those pads there. Or well, the pads were ripped off. Um, that, that's another thing, of course, you know, that can happen. Um, Ripped a few off myself. Through hole capacitors, but it had nothing for the solder to bind to. Ah, okay, I see what you're saying. So it's kind of like corroded out or something like that. Yeah, um, look, it's a, it's kind of a difficult one. It does depend a lot on, on that sort of stuff is, is probably largely on a case by case basis because sometimes if the hole is rotten through, you can end up in a situation where there are wires on inner layers of the board that aren't making contact. But typically, with through-hole type stuff, there's often only two layers. It depends if it's a power supply or if it's a motherboard or how old it is, that sort of thing. Um, but a lot of the time, what you end up having to do is just get creative. You know, sometimes you have to find a way of getting... If, if, you, can't, if you can't solder it to a hole, something like that, you need to then potentially attach a wire. And, but that then means the component's not secured in place. So you might have to use a glue or something like that to secure the component and then run a wire from the pin to wherever it's supposed to go. Um, you know, sort of do it, do it that way. But it, it, it is a very much a sort of a, does depend a lot on the, uh, the board itself. Um, well, I think we're, we're done with this. I've got all these components on. Uh, I'm going to just have a quick look around and see if there's anything that I need to potentially fix or repair. Um, but I think we're looking pretty good. I mean, we're not. It looks awful. But that's just what we're dealing with here. Um, it's just corroded and yucky. So the next thing this is going to do is get a good old ultrasonic clean. So we get this as clean as possible. And then I will put it back together and test it out and hopefully it will work. I want the leg of the capacitor and glue it. Yep. Yep. That would be, I think that's probably the only thing you can do. The thing that I'm always sort of like, the thing that we have to always look at with here is at the end of the day, so this is just some, uh, what do you call this? Um, uh, 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 what do you call it? Stuff that you mix up to... Uh, two parts there you go. um your your main focus is on you know the continuity of the electricity um how you get to that the board doesn't care and i've had times where i've just ended up doing um you know some of the weirdest ugliest looking repairs but at the end of the day if as long as you are you have a wire in place or something in place to make that electricity travel through um the, the board doesn't care how ugly it looks. <laughs> um, so, you know, sometimes with those sorts of things, you just have to kind of get creative, um, you know, find ways of, you know, getting things to work. Um, when it comes to things like glues for that sort of stuff, um, there are component adhesives that you can buy. Um, you can... Um, you know, you can probably use some of those neutral curing um, uh, 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 celastic things, you know, like the silicon stuff like that. Um, you could probably even use a hot glue gun as long as it's not a component that gets hot, because obviously hot glue guns will melt. So, uh, epoxy, that's the word. <clears throat> thank you very much, Dana. I do appreciate you turning up and saying hello today, so thank you for that. And... Uh, Enjoy your Saturday stuff.
Uh, any luck with uh, adhesive copper tape? You know what? I've never even used that stuff. I've had a lot of people swear by it, and uh, and like I probably should get myself some, but I've never actually used the uh, the, the copper tape. I, should, I really should buy some. I mean, the electronics shop up the road sells it. I should buy some and just sort of see what it's like. Um, so I'm just scraping off this epoxy. I got epoxy on this table when I was making something the other day, and now I'm removing it. Okay, so I've really only got one more thing here to do, um, and I may not even finish it, we'll just see. And that is I wanna pluck off a few components on this. This is a, a Quadra 630, LC630, LC630 um, power supply, and I need to replace all of these capacitors here. Um, and I've got to actually order these two, I don't have these two. And we've got some of this snotty stuff on it, holding these in place, and I don't, I want it, remove it because I want to remove these capacitors one at a time, not as one big clump. There we go, look at that. Snort. That's the way to go, Sloopy, that's dedication. Um, just got to make the, uh, give somewhere for the electrons to flow. That's what we've got to do. Yeah. I've got a very whingy chicken out there. I know which one it is, the little white one. The poor little thing gets bullied by the other chickens. But as that's the whole thing with chickens. They are kind of assholes to each other. That whole pecking order thing. All right, I might remove these two together because they're stuck together and I can't get to them. So one, two. Uh, one, two. Okay, so it's those two, those two, and those two. Let's see if I can do this with my shoulder sucker. No, Bernadette's gone, unfortunately. No more Bernadette. A little burning chicken. A little cutie that used to come in here and hang out with me. Used to perch up on my microscope. Um, no more Bernie. Bernie just died one day, really unexpectedly. Sort of went out there and, and dead Chuck was there. It's like, oh, I didn't even know you were unwell. Sorry about my bald head. I have to get close to this to see it because I've got my fancy glasses on with a little magnifier on the on the front. And uh, yeah, I have to be fairly close in order to see. Now, is that going to be enough to get these two components out? Feels like the answer to that is yes. Right. What sort of capacitor is this one? This one is going to be a 3316. These are the ones I have to order. I'm going to order those later today because they are... Uh, I've got some, but I've got little fat ones and I need long, thin ones like this. Um, and this one is 35 volt 220. Let's see if I've got one of those. 35, 35, 35, 35, 35. 35. They're down here somewhere. No, excuse me. This really should be hanging up. I have a hook for it and everything. That's just pure laziness. Ah. 35, there we go. Do I have a 35 220? Yes, I do. Isn't that good news? It's a little bit fatter than the old one, but I think we can make it work. <laughs> oh, 
off to the grocery store. Uh, see you if you're still on later. Thank you very much, Nate. I probably won't be, because I do need to actually go and do some Saturday stuff myself. Um, I just wanted to get a start on this one. Oh, balls. I, I can't finish it because I don't have these particular capacitors. I personally don't think these capacitors are bad. Um, I think this power supply is probably fine for the moment. But someone sent this to me for recapping. And recap it, I will. Might be easier with a pair of pliers and tweezers, we'll see. There we go, look at that. Did I do it right? Did I do it right? Yep, did it right. Okay, let's solder this little chappy in. Boop a doop. Hello. That's the Wingy chicken, just there. You can't see her, but she's just there. Hello. Hello. Do you want some food? Right. Hello. Oh, whoopsies. Stupid snot. I call it snot. It's not snot. We know it's not snot. But it's some sort of glue that stops these capacitors from wobbling. Yeah. Horrid stuff. Now, what is this? This is a 16 volt 470. Now, I did actually put some capacitors together for this already. 470, 16, look at that, oh, I got one already here. Do you have a recap guide for that PSU? No, I do not. This is the firstest I've ever done. And what I should, of course, be doing a smart man would be taking a photo of it and building a recapping guide. But I'm taking the lazy route. And I am pulling these capacitors off one at a time. Uh, I think I'll just be better off with the wick. And then replacing them one at a time. So I don't need a guide because I can just uh, do it one at a time. The only ones that I'm gonna be taking off and then not replacing will be the 3316s, which I have to order. And uh, I will know which ones they are because they'll be the only ones left empty. So this one is a 16 volt 470. 16 volt 470. There we go. I actually need to grab my capacitor containers. And, uh, and do a little bit of a stock take because I know I have run out of some and I'm about to do an order. And I would hate to do that order because I, I get them, I buy my caps from DigiKey. Um, I found them to be, they come from overseas, but I found them to be the fastest um, to deliver to me here in Australia. Usually only takes a few days. So if I order on a, I've had, I've even had with them ordering on a Friday and them arriving on a Monday. But if I um, order from them, like on a Monday, I'll get them before the end of the week, so. <clears throat> okay, what's this one? Is it 2210 volt? Do I have one of those? 2210 volt? Look at me, look at me. We've got everything, everything. 
except for the 3360. And I've got a bit of melted plastic on the end of my tip now. Uh, I know I have a um, motorized solder sucking gun thingy, but I will be totally honest, I, for the most part I like using solder wick when I'm removing components. Um, that's just my thing, man. That's how I roll. Did I take that? Yeah. So there is our replacement. 2210 volt. And these caps really don't look bad that I'm taking out. So They're probably fine. Probably... I actually have an LC630. As I say, this is a 630 power supply. Um, the 630 was available with a DOS compatibility card, which is cool. Um, okay, let's take this other 3300 out. This has got to come out. I just can't replace him today. No. Um, my 630 functions beautifully, but it is a pile of broken plastic. Uh, the case is, all of the plasticky parts of the case are just an absolute mess. Now that is partially my fault. I'll tell you what happened, this is a funny thing. Well, it's not really funny, but you know, laugh or cry, laugh or cry, one of the two. Um, uh, I was repairing it. Uh, it. Bits of plastic were breaking off it, and so what I did was I uh, uh, um, was getting the broken bits and I was gluing them back on using a combination of super glue and uh, bicarbonate soda, sodium bicarbonate. Uh, and then uh, I was in a particularly difficult position as I was working on it, and it slipped out of my hand and from a standing height fell onto the floor. And needless to say, with those brittle plastics, they don't handle that terribly well. And it literally just shattered. It was like dropping a glass on the ground. And that was that. That was it. That was the end. That was, that was a point where I said, I'm not going to bother trying to fix this at all anymore. It can just stay looking like shit. And it has ever since. But it works. That's the important thing, isn't it? That's all we really care about. Works. I did feel quite the wally, quite the wally, when I dropped it. Yep, there we go. Cool. All of these caps just, are, they're spotless. I don't see anything leaking from them. Uh, 1,000 microfarad, 35 volt. 1,000 microfarad, 35 volt. See, I made myself like a little console five kit, all for my Sia. Um, How's the board smell? It smells fine. There's no fishy smell at all. It doesn't, there's no evidence of leakage on this at all. You know, if, if it hadn't been the fact that I have had this board here or this power supply here for so long, poor owner of this thing, you know, they're just like, I want it back. And I, I can't blame them. Um, if I, you know, I would probably have said to them, look, I not really don't think this power supply needs doing. But when you have had something here with me for such a long time, it's like, I'm not gonna, you know, have it here for donkey's years and then give it back to you and say, I haven't done anything to it. It's like, yeah, no, I've recapped it for you. So, you know, you're good. You're good. Yeah.
Oh, check them. Okay, and then we've got a 1000 microfarad 16 volt. It's one of my favorite sized capacitors. As you can see, the new one's quite a bit shorter than the old ones. That's technology for you. The um, CD-ROM that I was uh, uh, recapping before, that one stank. That really stank. Very reeky. I've still got two in here. What have I got? What have I got? Let's have a look. Let's whip this little guy out. 2235. 4725. 40, 47016. Okay, so I've got. Oh, here we go. There's one. 10, 47010. I think I'm, I must be going to replace that with a 16 because I didn't have a 10. Something like that. Take him out. So there's one cap here that I don't have as well, one of these little guys. I might even be able to get a replacement of those just from the local electronics store. <laughs> do you struggle to find the time to do your hobby? Well, it depends what hobby you're talking about because I have so many hobbies. Um, but yes, ultimately I struggle to find time to do uh, pretty much anything for myself these days. I mean, unless you consider what I'm doing now, it's partially a, you know, this is, this is a sort of a thing that I'm doing on YouTube, but it is also something that I do enjoy doing. I do enjoy repairing things. Um, but I don't really get a chance to just go, oh yeah, I want to just do that today. And I'm pretty much always working. Uh, the old YouTube is a fickle mistress. If you're not uh, paying enough attention, she'll go elsewhere. So I have to, and this is one of the reasons why I'm ultimately shutting down the repair side of the business because uh, when I say shutting down, I will still be doing some repairs, but I won't be, you know, I won't be just saying, hey, yeah, send me that, and hey, yeah, send me this. I'll be doing it very, very selectively. Um, just, uh, Big time issues. So that one is a 22 microfarad 35 volt. Hmm. I know I've got a uh, 25 volt, but not a 35, but I don't think I have a 50 either. So, so that one is one I will have to buy. Yeah, you go. This is the last capacitor that I have. So I have three more caps to replace, but I'd need to order them in first. So this is 2547. Venture onto the PC side of the vintage computer. No, not really. Uh, not much interest, to be honest. Uh, I, uh, I mean, I am interested in computer history. So there are some pieces like things like the old Osborne, Osborne or the old compacts, those ones that you carry around. I, I, I'm interested in those. I'm interested in the sort of the novelty type things. I don't have any of them. Um, there's just, I don't really have the drive to go out and buy this sort of stuff. I'm just, uh, uh, that it doesn't give me the same sort of enjoyment that uh, the old, the vintage Macs do. 
All right, so we have got two, three, three capacitors to replace with these 3316s here. As I say, I need special ones because they need to be long, thin ones like this. I've already got them in my cart, my DigiKey cart. I've already placed, I've got them in there ready for me to order them, but I just didn't want to order them until I'd had a bit of a stock take here and had a look and see what else I need to grab. Uh, probably should grab. So the main boards that I recap analog board wise are Classic Classic 2 and the, uh, and the Color Classic. And so it's mainly just making sure I have capacitors for those. They're the main things people send me. Um, so, right, well, I think that's it for the moment. So I'll order these and then I'll have this one finished and then I'll be able to get that back to the owner. Uh, this is the floppy drive that we recapped earlier. That's all looking good. The CD-ROM uh, needs to get ultrasonically cleaned and I'm gonna probably give that a good 20, maybe even 30 minutes per side because it was so ugly. Uh, and then I'll put that together and uh, test it and hopefully that's working and <clears throat> then you know you'll probably see parts of this live stream in my uh, Quadra 840 uh, AV video when I release it because I'm going to talk through all the different stages and I'm going to actually say that I did um, the uh, did the recapping of the floppy drive and the CD-ROM drive during a live stream and I'll put a little link to it in case people want to watch it and stuff. Um, so uh, it is been basically going now for two and a half hours and I think that's enough for a live stream. Uh, of course, my bum's sore and I'm hungry and my feet are cold and all those sorts of things. Uh, and I really want to get this CD-ROM drive done and I don't like running the ultrasonic cleaner while I'm live streaming because it's too freaking loud. So um, I would like to say, a, as usual, a big old thank you to everyone who has been watching here today. I always appreciate your company and uh, I appreciate the chat and all of the activity going on. Uh, I have a, another channel sponsor and I'll be putting probably some links in the description in a little while when I get them uh, for the company that make these t-shirts uh, and I absolutely love them because they are all they, they've got those lovely kind of esoteric messages a lot of them a lot of them they have movie references without actually you, you have to know the movie to get the reference and I love wearing t-shirts like that that's uh, um, so um, Yes, it is bloody cold. Come here, you will not be cold. Well, yeah, I'd, all I have to do is wait until summer here and won't be cold either. But yeah, I would love to, to trade for what uh, for the weather the, you know, that's happening in the Northern Hemisphere at the moment because I hate being cold. I really do. Um, so thank you everyone for keeping me company. Thank you everyone for joining me. Thank you for smashing that like button. Um, and, um, and yeah, and all the entertaining, uh, sort of comments and things like that. So have a good rest of, uh, for a lot of you, uh, it'll be, I guess, probably Friday night or Friday, yeah, Friday evening. Um, and obviously for people in other parts of the world, whether it be Friday, Saturday or whatever, I hope it all goes well. Have a good one. And I will hopefully be streaming again next weekend if all goes well. And as I say, hoping to release some, uh, some pre-recorded content in the coming days as well. So thank you all very much. Have a good one. Thanks for joining me. See you next time. Bye-bye.